hmm oh are we back hello <laughs> I'm ever so sorry about that I don't know what happened well I have a feeling that I know but I'm still not a hundred percent sure what happened Steve something very weird happened and now it has messed everything up can you hear us can you see us <laughs> well, let's hope it doesn't happen again I don't know what happened though it's very strange a couple of things were going on on my computer that I was aware of something to do with my antivirus software and then another thing which I think is connected to Chrome the Chrome web browser so I think those two things were doing something and then it caused everything to lock unfortunately so did this unfortunately eventually everything stopped working so I hope this will carry on Olga <laughs> says it's okay Vita says it's okay Valeria says yes uh, Valentina everyone's started to come back apologies we were talking about scotch eggs but let's uh, wait for a few people to come on first shall we before we you know end that story you know what Steve it seems like a million years ago mm. that I was talking about scotch eggs with you because oh dear what a horrible feeling I can't begin to tell you how much terror that causes and and heartache when this happens so <laughs> I think we're okay now yes we, we were showing some scotch eggs but unfortunately my scotch egg has disappeared let's not let's not attempt to show that's when it all went wrong when you yes. were looking for the scotch egg so I think, I think it may have been the scotch egg that did it you see so we don't want to uh, we don't want to risk bringing that yes because it's disappeared from your playlist yes. Mr Duncan very strange uh, people are coming on now we're up to 27 so thank you everyone for coming back it's much appreciated uh, of course this technology uh, does go wrong sometimes but Mr Duncan is very clever in being able to sort it all out there it is there's a scotch oh, egg oh blimey here we go again Mr Duncan <laughs> scotch egg oh well, well if it goes wrong again we know it's the scotch egg yes if it goes wrong again we know that it is the curse of the scotch egg Olga liked the effect with the red faces I don't know uh, what I hated that I don't know what was going on yes that is it Saturino it's minced meat mm -hmm. uh, and we we wrap it round an egg uh, and then we uh, put some breadcrumbs on it and fry it and uh, it's don't know why it's called scotch egg presumably it originated in Scotland but we don't know that we don't know that we're assuming it is because that's why you know scotch if you put scotch in front of something it means it refers to Scotland mm. and it's supposedly uh, it's a bit unhealthy yeah uh, eggs and meat they are very nice though they're quite delicious uh, and the, the, the reason that um, if Gemini 2 is back I'm not quite sure whether Gemini 2 is back but it was Gemini 2 that asked the question why were we talking about scotch eggs a lot that's it and the reason is because it, we can go into a pub now um, the lockdown is finished but you can go into a pub but you can only have a drink of alcohol okay if you have what the government are saying is a substantial meal yes yeah, so something that is actually a meal instead of a snack so apparently it seems that there is a big difference between snack and meal yes. so scotch egg for me I think it's a snack yes but if you serve it on a plate with salad then it becomes a meal you see so that's what many pubs are doing they are serving scotch eggs so they can stay open and serve beer as well so it's very clever so the reporters were asking the government what do you mean by substantial meal yes and the reporters asked asked the members of the government if I have a scotch egg mm -hmm. is that a substantial meal yes and then there was confusion because a scotch egg is quite big you know it's not like crisps uh, it's, it's a bit more than that so some politicians were contradicting each other some 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 of them were saying no that isn't a substantial meal okay. and others were saying yes it is uh, and uh, some politicians corrected themselves in different interviews so uh, anyway the answer is yes it is uh, if you go into a pub and have a scotch egg you can have alcohol so that's the end of that so yeah. Gemini 2 
if you've missed it you'll have to watch the, uh, the the play again what i love is steve has now explained this twice so at the end of the previous video that that uh, <laughs> preceded us getting cut off and then and then now so you have two answers hopefully they're they're the same <laughs> Oh dear Steve that was awful I, I'm, I feel so upset it really does upset me when things go wrong like that as it does you Steve I just went into the kitchen and had some bread no I mean on your computer when, oh on my computer yes, yes. when Steve has yeah, computer problems everyone knows because you can hear him banging and thumping and throwing things around so yes yet yet I was very calm did you see that did you see how calm I was how calmly and professionally I handled the situation very good hmm. so now we've 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 sorted the scotch egg we're back up to 83 mr. Duncan good. so we're slowly climbing 83 uh, what people watching oh I see um, Gemini 2 is back and he thanks me for the information <laughs> yes it was yeah well, I won't say it again <laughs> no uh, yes it was interesting that um, uh, Joe we had Joe on before the breakdown okay uh, and wanted to know how to send you a picture okay well you can send a picture to my email I think I have my details here actually let me just see if I can find them I haven't shown them for a long time if you want to get in touch hopefully if I press this button <laughs> we, we won't break down but if you want to get in touch, yes, my email address is coming up right now. So now you know, you know, the email address. I'll go back a little bit just because it, it, it only comes on the screen very quickly. There it is. Look, look how lovely I am. Look at that. So there it is. Uh, that's my Facebook page and also my email as well. So there it is. So if you want to send a, po a photograph of you watching me, watching you, <laughs> watching me, <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, interesting. Tomek. Uh, says that uh, there was a rule in Poland uh, many years ago that you could only buy hard alcohol with a snack. Oh, uh, interesting. So we've got this rule now uh, in place in most areas of the UK where they've opened up the pubs again. But you can't have alcohol unless you have a meal or a substantial meal. Yes. Which does include a scotch egg. So you can have a scotch egg, maybe salad some tomatoes chopped up with some lettuce and maybe maybe something else on the plate so it has to be a meal that you can actually eat sit down and eat rather than a snack talking of that you can just hold in your hand talking of food Alberto, Alberto says where are the food idioms yes well They're coming up They're <laughs> coming up a few uh, moments ago we had nothing we had nothing because something happened with my computer it went wrong few that, people are sorry to cut you off there and now I'm waiting for it to go wrong again you see <laughs> you people are saying that they they're saying that your beard looks a little darker oh. your beard looks a little darker very well observed this this today this today <laughs> yes as opposed to which today uh, the other today that yesterday's today the other today yes okay um, yes, you may have noticed that my beard is a little darker. Yes, I, I haven't done it too much, though. I think I think it looks rather nice. What have you done, Mr. Duncan? I've put a little bit of colour on my beard, just a little bit, just to darken it slightly. So I think it actually looks better. I think it looks more. Well, I suppose it looks less. <laughs> I, I look less like someone's granddad. <laughs> uh, just somebody's uncle. Uh, instead I look like an uncle instead of a granddad you see so I don't feel so bad about it but I was expecting a lot of sarcasm you see I well, thought I'm holding back Mr Duncan I'm holding back I really thought Steve was going to make some reference to to Rudy Giuliani you see so I thought you were going to make some reference to that 
That was embarrassing, wasn't it? Yes. So yeah. I thought you were going to make, make some mention about me uh, get, getting hot in the studio and then maybe the sweat running down my face from my dyed beard. You look younger, says Anna. Flyaway says, I think it's ridiculous, but I'm not sure the flyaway is re referring to your to your uh, beard or not. Uh, less like Santa Claus, okay. says Vitas. Or I thought Steve was going to make some mention of yes. Dirk Bogart. Flyaway does say. S Steve, Dirk Bogart. Dirk Bogart. Dirk Bogart. In Death in Venice by... Lucino Visconti, a brilliant film, by the way. You have some beautiful music in that movie. So, yes, so, so I, I really did think Steve was going to make some, some suggestion that, that I was doing the same thing as Rudy Giuliani. Well, I wasn't going to say that I thought you were very vain, Mr. Duncan, vain. Not really. Well, women do it all the time. They, they... What, dye their beards? <laughs> well, some do. <laughs> Some women do dye their beards, you see. You know, we, we are living in the 2000s now, you see. 2020, you see, everyone has beards. Women, men, <laughs> children. <laughs> if, you, if you say you're vain, it means you spend a lot of time uh, looking at yourself yes. and attending to your appearance. You, you worry too much about your appearance or maybe you go too far with your appearance. But women, women dye their hair... Uh, so so if a woman can dye her hair different colors why can't a man dye his beard and, and i haven't really dyed it it's just a little darker that's all you can still see the gray so it's still there but it's less obvious once you start you'll have to do it every week because I can't. those gray roots will come through mr duncan I, d I don't really care about that to be honest i can always put a little bit on but nothing else you see i'm not going to have any plastic surgery or anything like that before anyone says mr duncan you know it starts with this but then it ends with with knives and and face transplants and plastic surgery fortunately i can't afford that <laughs> i can afford to buy a box of dye or coloring for my beard have so you got it to show us mr duncan i no. haven't Never mind. I, I could go and fetch it. No, no it's OK. Went. I don't I don't think anyone really cares. I think people want to see the food idioms. Yes. Let's get on to the food idioms because we, we've got less time now with the, the breakdown that happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's just Mr. Steve's breakdown. <laughs> it's not even the technical breakdown. That was just Mr. Steve rolling on the floor. Have we also got the uh, the sentence game? We have. Uh, <laughs> right. I have a lot to fit in I don't in the know, next hour. I don't know when. Anyway. Oh, yeah, I, can't, I still can't believe that happened. By the way, Steve, oh. I was going to show a mystery object as well, you see. Lucino, not Lucino. Oh, did I? Okay, Santorino then. said it's Lu the CH is pronounced like a K. Lucino. Lu Lucino. Visconti. Yeah, okay, and uh, Inaki, yes, you're, sure, you're correct. Die, D-Y-E, yes. not die, D-I-E. So die as in add colour. Or change yeah. colour, not dye as in uh, a different dye. Safe to say that Flyaway is not a fan of your beard. Really? <laughs> Judging by the comments. Why? There's nothing. You no, can it's okay. Flyaway. No, I've well, already mentioned. I've already mentioned. Flyaway. Uh, Flyaway says unbelievable. Um, oh, I see. Very vain. <laughs> Old man of the 1800s. That's okay. It's crazy. And I think it's ridiculous. Anna says I look younger. <laughs> Anna, Anna, thank you very much, Anna. Anna says I look younger. I just want it to look more tidy, you see. So that's it. It's, it's not a big deal. I mean, women all the time, every day, when a woman wakes up, the first thing she does is plaster lots of makeup on her face. So if a woman can do that to the whole of her face, I'm sure I can put a little bit of colour on my grey beard. Well, men are sort of paying more attention to their grooming. Yes, their looks. Their grooming. If you're, you're grooming, when you refer to a man's grooming, it means how tidy he makes himself. Yes. Is his beard's tidy, his hair, his teeth, his clothes, grooming. Are you well groomed? It just means are you very nicely presented? So you might have lovely nails. 
uh, perfect teeth, uh, your eyebrows, you've had them trimmed, um, your beard is neatly trimmed. Yeah. It's just if you look neat. You see? Uh, if you're well-groomed, it's yeah. usually used as a compliment. So, so you are looking well-groomed yes. today, Mr Duncan. A bit like if you were to groom your pet by brushing the, the fur uh, of your dog or your cat okay. and making it look nice and that you're grooming your pet, making it look neat and tidy. Uh, so you can use that same expression uh, for, a, for a man. You don't usually refer to women. Okay. Women don't usually... You don't, re, you don't say to a woman, you're well-groomed, no, do you? No, That's really. just an expression you would use to a man. Unless they have a beard, of course. If Unless a, they have a beard. If a woman has yes. a beard, you might say, you look very well-groomed, love. Very well groomed. Anyway. Anyway, food idioms. <laughs> food idioms. Very quickly, we've got 15 food idioms to look at. I was going to show the mystery object, but I might show that next week instead. <laughs> Sunshine is sad. Why? I don't know. Well, let's cheer you up, Sunshine. Uh, uh, Mr. C, you've never say hi to me. Oh, <laughs> really? Hi, Sunshine. Oh, I see. Is that is that what, what's making you sad? Yes. There are lots of people who actually get sad when Mr. Steve does say hello to them. <laughs> well, I hope I've cheered you up now. Yes. I say I can't say hello to everyone. So I just normally say hello. Hello. And that refers to everyone, including you, Sunshine. But I will give you a special hello because I want you to be happy. Yes. There is nothing worse than being unhappy. So we will try try our best. <laughs> to make you happy today we had oh by the way Steve whilst we're talking to each other on no particular subject do you know what the hottest Christmas gift is this year the hottest Christmas gift oh right the hottest Christmas gift so by that we mean a lot of popular pe popular I can't think. Is it computer related? No, it's something in the house. It's something that a lot of people are using because they are now stuck at home. Ah, Is it a some kind of webcam? <laughs> webcam? No. Uh, so that they can be seen on Zoom it's or no, Teams? Nothing, nothing to do with computers. Nothing to do with computers. So, but it's something to do with lockdown. Yes. It's Is some, it just lots of food? It's uh, you're, you're near... But it's something that many people are doing whilst they are in lockdown. Something that many people say they can't live without. Oh, what can't you live without that they would normally get if they were out and about having food delivered? Uh, no, ah. I, don't, I don't think that would be a very good Christmas. Quite clever, though, isn't it? <laughs> what? Having their turkey delivered yes. by a company that cooks it for them because a lot of people go out on Christmas Day to uh, a restaurant. Very expensive. We've done it before. It's very expensive if you if you yeah. go out on Christmas Day in the UK okay. because you don't want to cook your turkey. You go to a pub or a restaurant. You would pay about £60 at least, wouldn't you, to get a, a, a meal out on Christmas Day. So that's at least €50. Euros. That's very expensive. In fact, I think... That's probably the cheap end now. OK, what, what, what is the point you're making? I'm, uh, I'm losing track of your well, point. Well, I'm trying to figure out what this special... So it's a gift. It's something people are buying for each other. Yes. It's to do with lockdown. It's, is it connected to food? Yes. It's something people can't live without. Chocolate. I can't live without chocolate. Yeah, again, you're in the right area, but, but something... Some, think of chocolate that's been melted. Chocolate fondue? No. Uh, melted chocolate. It's, it's very obvious. Has, that, has anyone got it? It's something you can't live without. It w before lockdown came along and before coronavirus, we could all go out to various places and buy this thing. And some people like to have a lot of it every day. For goodness sake, someone must get this, please. Someone said it's a fancy face mask. Oh, very nice. <laughs> oh, you mean this? Yes, that's not a beard. It's a face mask. OK, then. Uh, nobody's got it yet. No, OK, then. I will tell you that the hottest gift this year, Steve, is a coffee maker. A coffee maker? It's nothing yes. to do with chocolate? No, but you can have hot chocolate as well. A 
coffee maker. And, and you can put chocolate in your coffee, you see? That's why I said melted, melted chocolate. So a lot of people this year have gone crazy for coffee machines in their house. So be because they're not working in the office, what they've decided to do instead is have a coffee machine in their kitchen. Now, we know for a fact that some of these things are quite expensive. So maybe a thousand pounds. I think that's the, they're very expensive, these coffee machines. Yeah, you see. So apparently one of the hottest gifts, one of the most popular gifts this year that people are buying each other uh, or asking for on their Christmas list is a coffee machine. Well, I can tell you, Mr. Duncan, I have not bought you a coffee machine for Christmas. And nor should you. Nor should I. <laughs> Because I must say, Mr. Duncan, I, I think that is a complete waste of money. Yes. We know people that have coffee machines, don't we? Yes. And uh, they're very slow. They're very noisy. And you end up with a very small amount of coffee in yes. your cup. And it's not even hot. And it's lukewarm. It's not even hot. If you say something's lukewarm, it means it's hardly warm at all. Yes. Uh, it's somewhere between warm and cold. Yes. Uh, lukewarm. That's Tep quite a good expression. Yes, that. lukewarm or tepid. I used to go to school with someone he called <laughs> lukewarm. Riser, we've got to be careful what we say. Riser has got a new machine like that. Oh. So uh, is it good? Do you like it? Well, that's what I was saying, you see. I think a lot of people are buying these because instead of going to the coffee shops and many of them are closed, they're actually deciding instead to make their own luxury coffee at home but of course you don't have to have one of those you can use one of these instead you see so this is what we use yes we just use one of these little devices that that makes the milk go all frothy so that's what we use it's a very simple device so a coffee machine like this can cost up to a thousand pounds or more even and well if you buy one of these little devices it costs you about ten pounds. So for one of those little machines, ten pounds. For the big coffee machine, <laughs> about a thousand pounds, if not more. See, that looks like an expensive one because that what well, that one can make two cups of coffee mm. at the same time. We went round. One of our neighbours has got a coffee machine, and we went round. The three of us went round. Or four of us, I think. OK. And she said, oh, let me make you coffee in, our, in my coffee machine. Now, I don't know the details. It didn't look a particularly expensive coffee machine. But let us it took 10 minutes to make four cups of coffee. Yes. And it, it uh, was so <laughs> slow. And by the time we got the coffee to drink, it was it was it was just warm. Did you hear that, viewers? Did, did that was he, Mr. Duncan's stomach. Did you hear my stomach then? My stomach was grumbling. Ah, Riza didn't buy it. She, she won it in a raffle. Oh, interesting. The coffee coffee does not come out very hot, mm. but you can heat the milk till it boils. Yes. Yes. I think if you're going to buy a coffee machine for your house, I think the ones that you get for your for homes mm. are nowhere near as good as the professional ones. And the professional ones must would cost a fortune, wouldn't they? Mm. Uh, in fact, I remember um, speaking. We used to go to um, a, a restaurant in Much Wenlock that served the most delicious coffee I've ever tasted in my life. Mm. And I remember the owner telling me about this coffee machine. It cost her over thirty thousand pounds. Yes, but the, but it, for this restaurant. But in fairness, it was one of those huge coffee machines that you see in Costa or in yes. Starbucks. That's right. So it was one of those. So yes, in, it was in, nice. In fairness, that was a big catering coffee maker. <laughs> yeah. So oh right. So coffee machines. People are buying coffee machines. How interesting. Yes. So well, well, because they're stuck at home. Many people are stuck at home. They they need their coffee. You see, some people love drinking coffee very much. Sergio we says, "What about a tea machine?" Not really. No, no, because it never tastes good. From a from a, a tea machine, you don't really see tea machines, do you? They you, were very popular in the nineteen seventies and eighties. Okay. Uh, uh, a, a a tea maker. Really? Yes, because my mum and dad had one. Oh, I know. Is that the thing that wakes you up in the morning? Yes. Yeah, so it's an alarm clock. Yes. 
but it makes your tea at the same time. Yes. They were very popular in the 70s and 80s, but my mother always used to complain because uh, it, it would wake her up with all the noise of steam and boiling water. Yes, it doesn't, so it, was, it doesn't sound like a very nice way to wake up. Or very safe. I don't think I would like to go to bed with something next to me that will start boiling water right next to your head. Because yeah. mum had it right on her side on, um, what do you call it, the bedside uh, table. Yes. It was quite big like that. So it had like a small kettle which you filled up with water before you went to bed. Yes. And it had a spout that went into uh, a teapot. OK. So you put the tea bags in the teapot and you set the alarm. And then before the alarm came on to wake you up, this thing was gurgling away. It would boil and then the water would go into the teapot. And, and then you had a, a cup of tea. I mean, you've got to be pretty desperate for a cup of tea to want it while you're still in bed. Yes. But these things existed, but mum used to be quite frightened of it because it used to gurgle and boil. and She's got all this hot water, right? If it had gone wrong, yes. she'd have got sprayed with hot water. There's nothing worse than waking up first thing in the morning to have some, some liquid squirting in your face <laughs> unexpectedly. Nespresso, Valeria, is... A, Famous here, it is a coffee machine, not very expensive, but the coffee for, for this machine, ah, ah, I see. So you're saying the machine is inexpensive, but the yes. coffee that goes with it is very expensive. It's like the printer, you see. Yes. So those Nespresso machines are actually a, a complete con because what they do is they give you the machine they sell the machine quite cheaply but the the little things that you put inside are very expensive so it's basically coffee using the same principle as as printer ink so instead of printer ink you are using coffee capsules instead but they are very expensive so it's the same thing yes because uh, uh, people that make printers they make them very cheaply mm but then charge you a lot of money for the refills. Yes, so the ink is expensive, just like the the little coffee pods that you put in those Nespresso machines. Well, I've stayed in quite a few hotels because we used to have sales meetings in my job and, you know, three, four times a year at least. And I've, I'd noticed until, obviously, the lockdown, a lot of the machines that they were putting these posh machines in in hotels coffee machines and i could never get them to work they've got these weird sort of pods and and like a lever and you have to sort of put it in bring the lever down and then it makes the coffee but it, they were useless mm. they were quite small like this and i think i broke one of them yes. couldn't get it to work and, and it was horrible things that doesn't surprise me with mr steve's big banana hands talking of bananas yes Let's have a look at some food idioms, because that's what we are here to do to improve your English, talk about the English language, lots of different subjects and also food idioms as well. We have some coming up, Steve. I bet you're already. Are you excited? No. Oh, OK. <laughs> that does not surprise me. Yes. I so am. let's have a look at some food idioms. Uh, our favourite subject, of course. Something is hard to say. <laughs> something is hard to swallow so when you eat food of course you put it in your mouth and then you chew and then you swallow something is hard to swallow what does that mean Steve if we say that something is hard to swallow it means that uh, as an idiom it's used to mean something that you find difficult to accept so if you have some new somebody tells you something for example uh they might say to you your boss might say i'm very sorry to tell you but um i'm going to make you redundant you're non no longer lead needed uh in this company okay and uh, that might be very bad news it might be very hard for you to swallow mm. it means you find it difficult to accept yes something that's difficult to accept is hard to swallow mm. just like it would be Difficult to swallow a scotch egg yes. all at once without chewing it. <laughs> I'm sure uh, you could do it. <laughs> but uh, why are you laughing, says uh, Reginaldo. 
well it's because mr. Duncan has a very dirty mind I don't have a dirty mind I, nothing like that I don't know what you're talking about Steve so any I'm, other examples hard to swallow something <laughs> some news that you find difficult to accept something that that is difficult to believe as well so something that you refuse to accept or believe is hard to swallow that's hard to swallow yes you might it's usually if you're giving somebody some bad news okay anyway something uh, that's hard to accept or believe here's another one something is f as flat as a pancake flat as a pancake flat as a pancake so obviously we need to explain that what a pancake is uh, it, it's a uh, it's a uh, flour and water batter mix uh, with egg in it a pancake mm. something you eat you roll yes. it up you put syrup on it or something like that it's 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 egg and flour and That's water it. and milk normally round and very flat yes so when we describe something as flat as a pancake it means that it, it has been maybe damaged or squashed or crushed and now it is as flat as a pancake that's as flat as a pancake it's just an expression meaning something has really been damaged mm. and squashed flattened here's another one uh, but where would you use it then mr duncan <laughs> okay we've got to use it. i like to give people lots of examples yes flat as a pancake mr steve sat on my lovely new hat and now it is flat as a pancake there we exactly. go exactly that's go. it here's another one steve we've got to rush through these Have we? salt of the earth if a person is the salt of the earth, what are they? That means they're a very reliable, honest, dependable person. Yes, a typical good-natured person, a, a person who obeys the law, maybe a person who, who is always nice to other people. Fair. Yes, so an average, nice, respectable person. <laughs> Riser says that Duncan's beard is hard to swallow. I agree. That's hilarious. It's hard to swallow. It is. Yes, salt of the earth. So you might say to somebody, oh, Roger. He's, a, he's salt of the earth. He is. Mm. He's the salt of the earth. It means he's just an honest, he's got no side. A person who's salt of the earth, they don't pretend to be something they're not. Mm. They're just like the salt that you find buried in the ground yes absolutely that's what it is what you see is what you get it's that's honest it. it's no, not pretending to be anything else no just a good natured typical good natured person here's another yes. one steve we've got to rush through these or else we will be here till midnight you can talk about apples and oranges so if you are talking about something and you say oh we are talking about apples and oranges here what, what does that mean? Uh, you, you're talking about two different things, mm. two very different things. Yes, two things that, that, that have no connection whatsoever. So you are talking about apples and oranges. Maybe you are trying to, to associate two things with each other, but they have no connection whatsoever. You can say, look, we are talking about apples and oranges here. They, they are separate. They have nothing to do with each other. They are individual things that have no connection they are as different as apples and oranges so they are very different things somebody's um abdul karim abdul karim hope i pronounced that correctly has said uh, has given another example of an idiom we are not made of sugar oh interesting it's a good one we are not made of sugar hmm, i haven't heard of that one no I'm not sure what that means. So maybe somebody could tell us. I have we not. Are not made of sugar. No, you might. You might uh, say that a person who has faults, perhaps maybe a person who isn't perfect. You might say that that person is not made of sugar. So maybe they have faults or or things that are not perfect. Yes, that that chalk and cheese. If you say if you say two people are like chalk and cheese. Mm. That's the that's very similar to apples and oranges. It yes. means two different, very different things. Yes, almost complete opposites. <laughs> they are they are they're like chalk and cheese. They are completely opposite to each other. Different. Yes, you could talk about a married couple, husband and wife. You could be talking about them, and somebody might say, "Well, those two are like chalk and cheese." Here's another one. Those two are like apples and oranges. 
very it's, different in character hmm. everything's different about them here's another one steve number five to be the breadwinner so to a be per the breadwinner a person in the family so quite often we are talking about a person maybe in in the family or in a relationship we describe the person as the breadwinner they are the person that goes to work and the person who who earns the salary or the wage that then helps to support the family or, or the relationship or the yes it could be that the, the majority uh, earner yes. in the family the one that basically pays for most mm. of the bills so some families of course have two breadwinners so maybe the mother and father s actually go to work and earn money as well so you can have more than one breadwinner abdel karim says we are not made of sugar means we don't melt in the rain oh i see so it's a okay so that's that's presumably meant to say that you're you know you're quite a stable uh person you don't easily shocked or upset by anything like the rain for example hmm. So, yes, I, I, I can understand that. We are not made of sugar. It means you're a bit, you're tougher. You're tough, in yes. other words. I think that's what that means. Here's another one, Steve. You might save someone's bacon. Ah, right, OK. Yeah. Save someone's bacon. Someone else has got one with bacon in. We'll talk about that in a minute. So if you save someone's bacon, it means you get them out of a difficult situation. You save their reputation or maybe you do something that stops them from coming to harm or maybe they avoid being harmed or having some sort of personal injury you save someone's bacon you prevent them from being harmed so you do something to help them out so they don't yes it could be from a physical harm hmm. or it could be uh, emotional harm yes. as well or for example, somebody might cover for you. Say you were late to work. Say you were you skived off work one day, and uh, somebody saw you out and about, and you said you were sick and you weren't. But your friend at work stands up for you and says to the boss, "No, he was really ill. It was you know he was. I, I spoke to him. He was really ill." And your friend might say, "Well, thanks for saving my bacon." Mm. So you've saved somebody's yeah. reputation in that case. That's it. Saved them from being sacked. But, you know, you could uh, pull somebody away if they were trying to cross the road um, and there was a car coming. You might pull them back and say, oh, you know, the car there. And they'll say, well, thanks for saving my bacon. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody's used, somebody who brings home the bacon. Ah. That's similar to the breadwinner, I think. Yes. So if you bring home the, the bacon, it means you are bringing something home that is useful, that can help the family. Quite often referring to, to money. A salary of some sort. Here's another one, Steve. Yes. I'm going to whiz through these. Butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. If we say a person appears as if butter wouldn't melt in their mouth, they seem like a lovely person, a generous, kind person, maybe unassuming, maybe a person who, who just has a lovely personality and a lovely character. Butter wouldn't melt in their mouth they are very innocent they appear innocent and pure butter wouldn't melt in their mouth but often that expression is used in a negative way to describe someone who pretends that they're all sweet and innocent mm. uh, but in reality they're not mm. but for appearances in public they make out that they're this perfect person and somebody might say, oh, anyone would think anyone would think butter melts in her mouth. Mm. Uh, so she pretends to be sweet and innocent or he does. But in fact, they're not. Mm. So that their outward appearance belies their true personality. Yes. Maybe they are a bit naughty, but they look as if butter wouldn't melt in their mouth. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's a good one. An apple a day keeps the doctor away because apples are, are, I suppose, good for you. They are a good source of vitamin C. And there you go. Yes, they're suggesting that if you eat fruit, that's good for your health and you won't have to see the doctor so often. <laughs> Something is the spice of life. 
something that adds a little bit of mm. joy or excitement or stops life from becoming too dull and boring is the spice of life so maybe some people say that travel is the spice of life or maybe learning new things is the spice of life exploring new horizons finding out things about yourself learning new skills doing things travel do do things that expand your your abilities or your view of the world you can say something is the spice of life it yes. gives life meaning yes yeah, something that, that literally spices something up mm. um socializing for a lot of people is the spice of life uh, being able to see people and talk to people and communicate with people mm. um no, we don't say eat my bacon. Uh, garlic keeps the doctor away, says Sergio. <laughs> it's not only does it keep the doctor away, it keeps a <laughs> lot of people away. I don't think there are any idioms with garlic. You would have thought there would be, but there isn't. I don't think there are any. No, I've never I've never come across any garlic idioms. Maybe we should invent one. Oh. If you take the biscuit Oh, that's an interesting one, Steve. Yes. Something really takes the biscuit. Well, it takes the biscuit, that does. <sighs> Something that happens that's <sighs> unbelievable or disappointing or something you can't believe has happened that is causing some sort of disadvantage. It takes the biscuit. Oh, I can't believe that happened. Maybe a person does something that you didn't expect. You could say, well, that really takes the biscuit. So it is something that a person does to you that you can't believe. You can't accept that that person did it. It really takes the biscuit. I can't believe it. Alessandra says being an English addict is the spice of life. Oh, I like that one. Yes. So the spice of life, learning a new skill, perhaps learning English as a second language. Oh, I like it. Saturino says to do with the butter idiom, we say water, a water and soap person. <laughs> oh, that's good. Water and soap. I like that one. Here we go then, Steve. Here's another one. Number 10, use your loaf. Yes, use, used uh, as an insult, really. Use your loaf. It means, uh, you know, have some common sense. You, use your head. Hmm. Think before you say something. Think, for, think before you do something. Yes, well, it means use your head, use your brain. Yes. So if you use your loaf... It means you are doing something that uses your brain. You are thinking deeply about something or you are actually thinking about something. You are working out how to do something. You are thinking for yourself. Use your loaf, which, of course, comes from Cockney rhyming slang for loaf of bread. Head, you see. So that's why we say use your loaf. Think about what you are doing your loaf of bread is your head normally used as a bit of a uh, an insult mm. really because somebody might be asking you a question about something mm. and you might go i don't know I, I can't think about that and somebody might say oh use your loaf mm. in other words come on make an effort use your head think about it yes think about it it's the same as oh come on use your head use your loaf Here's another one. One more. I think we'll have one more. I've got loads more. I've got 15, but we will finish on 11. <laughs> Something that's that is a hot potato, hot mm. potato. Ooh! if something is a hot potato, what might it be? It's a hot topic. Yeah, something that is not easy to approach or talk about. Or maybe something that you don't want to handle for too long. Maybe oh, something. Yeah something you want to drop quite quickly. So maybe a subject or, 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 or maybe a project that you're working on and then suddenly you decide that you don't want to do it. You drop it like a hot potato. Yeah, so in this country now, talk, well, you might say talking about politics or religion hmm. in groups of friends, you could say that those subjects are a bit of a hot potato. Hmm. In other words, they're things you don't really want to talk about mm. because they can often lead to arguments yes it's the same with brexit now in the uk mm. um because everyone is so polarized about brexit and because people get so upset in defending their arguments mm. talking about brexit in 
company now is a bit of a hot potato yes it's a subject you don't really talk about although that subject is being talked about now because we are approaching the moment of truth we when are. when it all begins when we officially leave europe oh dear we haven't got long oh yes uh riser says couch potato <laughs> yes a, per a couch potato a person who sits around watching television and does nothing else so they get fat and unhealthy i mean in brazil uh reginaldo says that they use the phrase your potato is being backed i think that's baked it could be baked yes i think it is baked is it baked as in putting in an oven yes uh is a threat yes your potato is being baked in other words you're uh, you're about to have some harm yes. come to you if, if a person c gets into trouble or, or maybe they get uh, removed from their job they are uh, sacked we might say that that person is toast <laughs> as well yes that's another good one uh, when, when you're when the boss finds out what you've done you're toast you're out of here you're gone <laughs> i like it so those are some food idioms. Do you like the food idiom above my head, by the way? There, there is a food idiom right there, you see. So you can be as cool as a cucumber. Cool as a cucumber. You can see that little cucumber is standing by <coughs> an electric fan on a very hot day. So he is staying cool, as cool as a cucumber. Because cucumbers are renowned for being cool hmm. if you cut a cucumber and put it over your eyes to get rid of your baggy eyes it's cool it has a cooling effect on your skin yes um, so a person who is always calm who never loses their temper like me for example even when my live stream breaks down when my computer goes wrong i remain as cool as a cucumber and um Vitas says, what about big cheese? Who? The boss. The boss. The person who is in charge. The big cheese. <laughs> yes. He is the big cheese. Head honcho. The boss. Numero uno. Yeah. Shall we play the sentence game? Because we have about 10 minutes. I think we can stay until four. OK, well, that's when we would have stayed to. That's it. Well, that's what I mean. So we have about 15 minutes. So I think we can play a little bit of the sentence. Ooh, a smart cookie. Oh, that's a, a good one, Vitas. A smart cookie is a person who is, well, clever. It, it, they are a person who can think of things in a very different way. A smart cookie. Maybe they are in, intelligent. Yes. You see? Oh, you're a bit of a smart cookie, mm. Mr. Duncan. Maybe too smart. Ah, maybe you are too smart. Ah. Yes, big cheese versus the small potato. That's a good one, uh, Mandy. If you're a small potato, it means you're an insignificant person. Oh, they're they're just small potatoes. They are. Mm. So they're they're not they're not significant. Say in the in the work environment. Yes. Uh, yes. So that big cheese, small potato. Yeah. So quite a few. Yes. And thank you for coming up with uh, and suggesting other ones uh, to us. Uh, Abdel Karim, you've bitten off more than you can chew. Ah, yes. That's a good one. You've taken you've taken on more than you can handle. Maybe you've agreed to do a certain job for another person. But then you realise the job is too difficult for you. We can say that you have bitten off more than you can chew. You have too much to do more than you can handle yes mm, I love and that it. could be in relation in a relationship as well uh you somebody might say oh blimey i can't believe uh um th that uh, those two people are going out together oh, blimey they he's bitten off more than he can chew with her mm. okay in other yeah. words she's a bit difficult to handle high maintenance yes <laughs> uh if it, if it's if a woman is high maintenance, it means she always expects the, the, the best from, from, from anything, whatever is happening. So she wants the best clothes, the most expensive makeup. Everything has to be good 
and maybe the man hasn't got much money you see so he can't support the woman he has bitten off more than he can chew palmyra that's what the, we say in the uk squashed like sardines yes so, so if you're if you're uh, very close to other people particularly on public transport maybe the underground or a bus or a train and there's lots of people in there you can say you're squashed in like sardines mm. in other words sardines in a tin mm. squashed together uh, in Lithuania they say herrings so they must sell herrings close together because obviously in a tin sardines are all very close together packed yes. in so yes, if you say you're squashed in like sardines, could be at a pop concert, but usually it's referred to, you know, in public transport, really. Right, God, we could talk about food idioms all day. We could. In fact, it feels as if we are. <laughs> like chalk and cheese. Yes. OK, let's move on. OK, let's, Steve, we've got to have the sentence Ooh. game. Alessandra says, Mr. Steve, are you going to have an online concert with your choir for Christmas? Well, um, we're doing one at work and we're also, well, we're not, I won't give it away. No, we, we, we don't want to give anything away. Not with the choir, but there could be some treat coming. There could be. For people watching this channel. It, it depends. We're not sure yet. Yes, so <laughs> thank you for that, Alessandra. <laughs> oh, it's so dark outside already. Look at that. It's only quarter to four. You have egg on your face. Yes you have egg on your face it means that you've done something that makes you very embarrassed okay then uh, shall we have the sentence game steve yes because it's getting a little bit late i was going to show you in the garden you see i i had mr steve as well in the garden this morning he was he was up at the ladder i don't know what steve was doing there so you were secretly filming me oh yes there we go yes yeah, so i was uh chopping clipping back um see that that's our fence and the i uh, hope it is <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the neighbor uh, uh, growing against our fence she has a lot or they have a lot of thorns yes uh blackberry bushes blackberry thorns and they've got this annoying habit of growing through the slats of wood yes. on the fence and they actually damage it they yes. push the bits of wood apart so I'm attempting there to to remove them so that they don't cause lasting damage. Mm. Yes, the, the little uh, um, brambles is another word. They poke their way in to little spaces and then they grow through. And as they do it, they damage the wood on your fence. Yeah, so that's what Steve was doing this morning. It's amazing how even even things that seem very innocent, little thaw, little bushes, or things that, that grow probably quite fast can cause a lot of damage to things. We, we didn't have a look at my socks either today. Here, here are my socks, everyone. I know this means a lot to most people. Look, look at my lovely socks today. All oh, right. It wouldn't the rectangles be rectangles of color. Yes, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be here with a, an English addict if it wasn't for these lovely socks to show you. Look at that, honey, lovely. They're very nice. I want to get close to my socks. Let's get closer, shall we? Because this is what people want, you see, on a Sunday afternoon, Steve. I'm sure they do. No, they do. Look, look, let's, let's get really close. You can almost smell. You can almost smell my foot. <laughs> Ooh, yes, I love the colour of those socks. I think they're brilliant. <laughs> I like them a lot. Sergio's getting hungry. He says a hungry man is an angry man. Oh, yes. I concur. In fact, you can be hungry and angry. I concur. At the same time. Which means that I agree with what you are saying. Anyway, without any more delay, boys and girls, we have 10 minutes. I think we've got time for maybe two, maybe three rounds of the sentence game. Did Tomic come back? Tomic was first on the live chat today, by the way. Yes, I know. Uh, and uh, that's twice in a row. Tomek said that he was first in the live chat, but is he still here to do the sentence game? I don't know. Well, we don't know. I haven't seen Tomek mentioned uh, coming up in the live chat for a while. Maybe Tomek is still watching the other live stream, wondering why we are.
like that. <laughs> so Tomek, Tomek, we're, we're here now. We're not there. Well, this is the new live stream now. We had to restart it. I wonder if Maida's back because it was their first time on the live chat. Oh, I know. I feel terrible. Uh, so hopefully we didn't cut uh, Maida off. You know how annoyed I get when things go wrong technically on the live stream because it causes so much. Oh, yeah. Maida is back. Oh, yes. Maida. Hello, Maida. Yes. Maida is back. Been watching you since 2014, but the first time uh, on the live chat. Oh, making really? a comment today. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. Oh. I noted that earlier on. Pretty good. OK, shall we have the sentence game, Steve? Yes. Let's play a couple of rounds of the sentence game. People are... Peter Valentina says if Tomek isn't here, we have a chance of uh, getting at the sentence game. <laughs> I think uh, Tomek, I don't know if Tomek is still here. I don't know Are either. you still here, Tomek? Well, we'll soon find out uh, when <laughs> we uh, put up the sentence game. Yes. <laughs> when the sentence game begins, we will know if Tomek is here or, or not. So I'm going to say to everybody, the sentence game's here. Think carefully. Use your loaf. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say that. Because today's sentence game is connected to food, phrases and words. Now, Steve didn't even know that. But yes, it's true. That's what we're doing. Today's sentence game, we're looking for food, phrases and words. So without any more messing about or wasting time, here is today's first sentence game. I will try not to put the answer up like last week. <laughs> I put the I kept putting the answers up. Will you something me to something the something? And ah. it's to do with food. Yes. You say, Mr. Duncan. So it's connected to food or maybe phrases with food. So it depends, really, you see. We will see. <laughs> I don't know what's will happened. you something. Four letters beginning with H. Hmm. Me too. Something four letters beginning with P. Mm. The. Oh, I think I know what it is. Mm. Oh, will right. you something me to something the something? Ah. Well, we've got we've got an answer already. Oh yes, look at that, and it isn't Tomek. <laughs> Tomek, I think has 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 gone. I think Tomek has abandoned us. Well, yes. <laughs> It's not fair. Well, dat vu. Yes, well, that is definitely an answer that could be put in there. We've got several correct answers, Mr. Duncan. OK, then I was drifting away there. I thought I thought you were. I thought. Mr. Oh, it, Duncan hasn't said anything for a it's while. All, it, there's always technical things happening. So even though I stand here looking calm and relaxed in front of me, there are lights flashing. There are things moving on the screen. <laughs> there's all sorts of chaos. That second word begins with P, by the way. P. P. So will you something me to something the something? So maybe an Ooh. easy one. I think this is a little bit easy. Well, Daisy Cow is, was the first to get it completely right. Oh. So well done, Daisy Cow. Mm. Uh, Alberta says, will you help me to cook? Well, I suppose cook could be there, but it begins with P. Four letters. That that Vu said that as well. Yes. Um, pass. Ale, ale uh, Siragar says, will you... Help me to pass the potato. Mm. Well, I mean, it fits. Pass fits. Yes. But in the context of this, would you could you say that? You wouldn't. You might pass a potato if you were if you wanted a person to give you a potato. So maybe you want someone to give you a potato. Will you help me to pass the potato? But we don't normally pass potatoes. We'll give you half a point. Unless, of course, you've the word eaten. Fits. Unless, of course, you've eaten a very big one. And then uh, tomorrow morning you might pass the potato. So, yes, it looks as if we've got the answer here. Uh, we have the return of 
Mr Cockrell. Keep Par it clean, Mr Duncan. Apparently, people were complaining about Mr Steve having a poo on the toilet. So we've had to stop that, unfortunately. So instead, we've got my big cock has returned. Daisy Miss Cow was, was, was first what? to get it correct. Good. Congratulations, Daisy Cow. Let's have another one, shall we? Because we, we still have time, you see. We still have I didn't get the answer. I know, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm in such a hurry, you see. So the answer is... Bing! Yes. Will you help me to peel <laughs> the potatoes? And Valentina got it right as well. Uh, so did Valeria. Or Valeria. Hmm. Um... So you can say, will you, will you help me? Would you help me? Can you help me to peel the potatoes? Peel, you see, the word peel. Normally when you take the skin off a vegetable, you peel to take the surface off something. You peel it away. Ricardo says, pick the potatoes. Oh, OK. Then. Yeah. Yes. Well, that fits. You can pick. pick I'm, not, fits. I'm not sure if you pick potatoes, though. Well, you could be you could be um, outside in a field. Mm. Uh, yes, I suppose you could pick them. Do you could, pick? I don't know whether you pick them or do you. Is that the right phrase to say when you're you? Because you, you only dig the potatoes. Yeah, I think. Uh, you would yes, say. I think you dig them because they're under the ground. Pick normally refers to things like strawberries that are on the surface. Yes, things that grow on on the bush. You pick them. You pick yeah, them. But the word but, fits. Yeah. And yes, I can see what you're what you're doing there, but the And that's all it matters. We were looking for peel. Here's another one then. Let's have another sentence game. We will be going soon. I know it's a pity. What a pity. We have to say goodbye soon. Here's another sentence game. Word, food phrases and words. Oh. oh. All this something has really got us in a something. Ah, and it's to do with food, is it, Mr. Duncan? Yes, this is a phrase that we often use. It refers also to food. Something that might be a big problem or something that is causing uh, difficulty or maybe a situation that you are finding difficult to cope with. Yes, all this something has really got us in a what? Oh, right. Mm, yes. The sentence game. We are talking about food today. Food words, phrases, all this something. So if you do something wrong, if you do something that you should not do, you might end up in a what? Valentin says potatoes are not always underground. Uh, OK. OK. In that case, we, we will... We will concede. I've never seen potatoes grow above ground. Maybe certain types, maybe. I've never seen that, but uh, we will say that, uh, OK, OK. Mm. Uh, we'll give you that one. Mm. Mm. I've forgotten who said it now. Interesting. Will you help me pick the potatoes? I've forgotten who said that now, but uh, we'll let you have that. Ricardo said that. OK, then. So all this something has really got us in a something. We are talking L, five letters, and S, four letters. So if you are in, maybe you are in trouble, or maybe you are in a situation you can't handle or cope with, you might find yourself in a what? It's also a type of meal as well, a meal that you normally have during winter. Ah, you see, I can't give any more clues, really, without giving it away. Hmm. OK. Hmm. Sergio. Oh, Sergio says lemon and sink. Hmm. Hmm. So I think this is I thought this was easy, to be honest. Well, the, the, the words that the, I mean, the the, the uh, letters fit the words, but I'm not sure the meaning is right. But, there. but, but the sentence makes no sense. Yes. Alessandra is here as well. Vitas says lemon and sick. Hmm. Oh, OK, then I'm I'm surprised. I thought this one would go very quickly. I've, as uh, I think people are getting maybe the last word. I'm not sure. 
I can't even guess it, Mr. Duncan. Oh, I see. To get in a situation that you can't handle, you get into a lot of trouble over something and you can't get out of it. Well, it looks as if I'm going to have to give the answer well, with no correct answers at all. Where's Tomek when you need him? Yes, come on, Tomek, where are you? I think Tomek is still watching the other live stream. Tomek is wondering why we are just standing there without without moving at all. <laughs> Has anybody got any of the words right, Mr. Duncan? No. OK, so no correct words yet. No, no correct words at all. OK, interesting. This is very difficult. It's, and, and it's it's related to food. Yeah. Is it an idiom? Um, well, it is. Yes. Y yes, it is a phrase that we use quite often in English when we are in a situation we can't handle. You are in a very difficult situation. Hmm. So, uh, wow. right, OK, I, I was thinking pickle, but that doesn't fit anywhere. No, I thought I thought someone would say pickle, you see. So you can be in a pickle, which means you are in a difficult situation, something that you find difficult to mm, yes. solve. But this is another one that we can ah. use. <laughs> what? Has Serene got got one of the oh, words? Oh, it right. looks like we might be getting. Ah. In fact, we've got we've got both words. Have we? Yes, I can see both words. Anna. Oh yes. Anna and Serena together. Serena. You are working well together. You have both come up with the correct sentence, and I suppose I should give it now. cock a doodle do nobody's got both words no but we have but we do nobody's got both words and put them together no so come on somebody let's wait for two more seconds 10 seconds will count down the words are there yes the words are there serene has got one word and anna has got the other word yes This is not the most exciting moment of YouTube, <laughs> but <laughs> here's the answer then. Right. Are you ready? Yes. Bing. All this lying has really oh, got it. Oh, yes. Jimmy got it. Yes. Jimmy got it. All oh, sun, sunshine got it. Yes. Everyone's got it. <clears throat> We've all got it. <clears throat> all this lying has really got us in a stew. If you are in a stew, if you start something that you can't handle or maybe you get into trouble or a situation you can't handle, you can get in a stew. So imagine a person inside a large pot being cooked <laughs> like stew. And a stew is, of course, a, a mixture of lots of different things. Mm. So it's a bit of a mess. So if you lie a lot, if you're always lying and not telling the truth, then you get into a bit of a mess. Mm. Well, the word so stew, that's it. Well, the word stew just means hot and bothered as well. So a person can stew over a situation or a thing, maybe something that is worrying you. So to think about something for a very long period of time, maybe something that causes stress or anxiety, you stew. So in, in that respect, in that sentence, you are using it as a verb. You stew over something. But in, this, into, sen yeah. but in this sentence, we are saying you are in a difficult situation. You are in a stew. Yes. yes, it is an idiom. We use it quite often in English when we are, we are expressing a difficult... Well done to Anna and Serene, who got uh, both of the words. Uh, but Sunshine and Jimmy... And Alberto uh, got them, uh, and and Alcare and Sidra got okay, them together. That's, that's it. Okay, so let's have one more. Okay, I, I like this one. I think it may have been mentioned already today, so <laughs> this might go very quickly. Right. Here is the final sentence game for today. My something left something. Oh. All over my <laughs> something. <laughs> I can think of one thing, but it's rude. My something left some. 
as usual <laughs> there is a really disgusting dirty one that i could say there but i'm not going to my something left something all over my <laughs> some something <laughs> we have seven letters three letters and four letters food related yes definitely food related my something left something yes. all over my something so it's food but also it's a very well-known expression as well we use this quite a lot in english if you do something that causes i don't know maybe embarrassment maybe you make a error <laughs> i nearly gave the word then maybe you do something you shouldn't or maybe you perform badly maybe mr steve steps onto the stage to sing a song but his his throat is a little bit sore so so all of the the notes come out wrong <laughs> tomek is here oh tomek is here i see he's been hiding ah. hiding silently watching us yes i think he's Observing. i think tomek has been hiding in the bushes behind us there <laughs> he's he's been lurking in the bushes yes <laughs> you were there all along my something left something all over my bedspread no sorry i mean uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> what there we go so uh, tomek's got has got uh, two of the words rise has got one oh it looks like vitas Beatrice. vitas ah vitas vitas is a smart cookie as we said earlier so if a person is a smart cookie it means they are very quick and clever i think so yes <laughs> hello night trooper hello night trooper i don't recognize your name is it your first time here night trooper oh, well interesting. well done mm. night trooper yeah and uh, valeria yes jimmy from hong kong yes a lot of people have got this one so I suppose we should give the answer straight away because it looks as if a lot of people have got this one because we did actually mention this earlier. That's the funny thing, Steve. We actually did mention this. We did <laughs> earlier this actual expression. So here it is then. Mr. Cockerell, please come up and say hello to Mr. Steve. <laughs> and Tomic was the first to get them all right yes tomek uh, i think it's f it's safe then, to say uh, he got two of them and then jacqueline got the first one it is safe and to then say tomek put them all together <laughs> it is safe to say that tomek is a smart cookie i think so he has no egg on tomek's face there is no egg on his face no so well <laughs> let's let's show the answer even though uh, i think steve just gave it to us but there it is my mistake left egg all over my face if you if you get egg on your face or if something leaves you with egg on your face it means it causes a lot of embarrassment and shame you you've done something that wasn't very good and then lots of people start looking at you you get lots of attention from other people you, you are left feeling rather embarrassed and ashamed particularly you, if somebody was to actually throw an egg in your face you would be very embarrassed by that yes but if for example in a crowd of group of people you were absolutely certain you were right about something and everybody else was wrong mm. and you insisted on it and then it was proved that you were wrong mm. you would feel a bit silly yes uh, so you would use that expression uh, that my mistake left egg on my face or yes. made me feel like I've got egg on my face yes. so something that you don't perform very well something that leaves you feeling ashamed or embarrassed leaves you with egg on your face <gasps> that yes, embarrassing <laughs> makes you feel embarrassed that's it that's it Mr Duncan lovely to be here <sighs> even uh, even though I don't know what I'm going to do with this live stream because now we have two live streams so we have the first part of the live stream and this is the second part so whenever this happens it always causes a lot of confusion because some people just watch the second half 
without watching the first half and some people watch the first half without watching the second half so there are two halves to this live stream if you are watching this then this is the second half the second part because we had well we had a computer failure we Some, did something went wrong i know what it was i'm pretty sure it is it is a mixture of norton norton antivirus software and uh, google chrome <laughs> tomek says delete both parts yes oh thanks tomek <laughs> you know i might just do that uh, so when the internet went down, we were here, yes, looking well, silly, and we looked like we'd got egg on our face. Yes, a bit. we looked we, a bit silly and embarrassed. We were definitely left with egg on our face. Yes, today because the internet uh, live stream went wrong. Well, the computer went wrong. Thank it's you, Beatrice. Bye to you too. Uh, people sending me lovely messages. Thank you for your company today. I hope you've enjoyed this. We've been here for well over two hours, but it might not seem like it if you are watching the live stream recorded in two parts. I'm sorry about that. We had a slight technical problem. It is out of my control, unfortunately. Lovely to be here and I want to wish everybody a wonderful week mm. and I will see you again back here with Mr Duncan live on Sunday at 2 p.m. Yes. Uh, you may be seen during the week, of course. I'm not Never sure. Know. We will see what happens. I have a busy few days ahead of me. Certain things going on. Yes. So, yes, a, a lot going on at the moment in our lives. And we will see what happens. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Bye bye. And I'm obviously going into the kitchen to make a cup of tea and a tea cake. Yeah. So see you all next week. Bye. I must admit I am very hungry at the moment because today I haven't eaten anything. I've eaten no food at all. Thanks for your company. Thank you very much. Thank you. Zudzika says, I don't know why, but I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I'm pleased to hear that, to be honest. That warms the cockles of my heart. It really does. Thank you very much. Thank you, JC Geordie, Sunshine, Coral, Olga. Thank you, Gia. Thank you, Valeria, Alessandro, Richard. Fly away. I will fly away <laughs> in a few moments. Thanks a lot, Maria. Thank you also, Mosen, Sam. Thank you, Luis Mendez, Vitas. Thank you very much for watching me today. See you during the week. Hopefully, I might do a little surprise live stream during the week. We will see what happens. And then, of course, next Sunday, we are approaching, we are getting ever nearer to Christmas. So I think next Sunday we will start having our little Christmas celebrations. OK, I think that's a good idea. This is Mr Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm, a, I'm very sorry about the technical problems, but this video is in two halves, <laughs> which I can do nothing about. And of course, until the next time we meet here on YouTube, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Ta-ta for now. I'm a big boy now.